We're in Clonakilty for round two of the Irish Tarmac Rally Championship, the West Cork Rally. A full field of cars await this afternoon's stages. Two stages twice, but interestingly enough, two of the stages are in the dark. It's going to make for an unbelievable competition. Let's talk to some of the drivers. Keith Cronin had a great start to the season in Galway and he'd be looking to make it two from two this weekend and strengthen his lead in the championship at this early stage. Yeah, no, we had a great start in, in, in Galway. Wasn't expecting it, but um, yeah, long rally here now this weekend, so uh, hopefully we can get a good result again. Last year's winner of this event, though, Josh Moffat comes here with the pressure of number one on the door, but with a new car for the season, there would be some work to do. Yeah, we have a new car this year, and look, we have a bit of work to do with it yet to really get up to speed. Um, look, at I think uh, today is looking like it's going to be dry enough. Uh, I think again tomorrow is going to be quite wet, so mixed conditions is going to make tough, tough tyre calls and, and tough to like click into the car as well there. But um, look at it, it's going to be the same for everybody. So um, yeah, look at we're looking forward to. A second place in Galway was a good start to the season for Callum Devine and a similar finish would be welcomed this weekend, but of course, he'd be out for the win. Yeah, definitely, definitely is. I um, think we were fourth in Galway last year and yeah, we kind of knew you get through Galway, got second, it was a good start for anything, so yeah, coming here to hopefully try and uh, yeah, try to one better maybe, Kelly. The area once again welcomes the Clonic Hilty Park Hotel West Cork Rally with open arms. The fantastic scenery hiding some of the most challenging stages on the calendar and it's out to those first stages that we head now with a short but challenging opening day here at round two of the Irish Tarmac Rally Championship. Having secured second place on the opening round, Callum Devine and Noel O'Sullivan were already aiming for one better this weekend, taking an early lead of 6.3 seconds by the end of the opening day, pushing on as much as they could in the dark to gain that advantage. Winners last time out, Keith Cronin and Mikey Galvin, would make a cautious start with competition like this. It wasn't always possible to bed yourself into an event, but the longer format on this year's West Cork Rally would make it a long rally, and pacing yourself could be the key to a result. After a disappointing opening round, Matt Edwards and David Moynihan certainly weren't looking for a repeat of that on round two. They take it a little cautious in the opening stages, making a few changes to the car as the night went on to improve the confidence. They're happy with third, but would have liked the margin of 30 seconds to be a little bit smaller. This weekend would be the first time in the new M Sport run car for Junior World Rally champions William Crichton and Liam Regan. They were happy with how it was going, having fun in the new Rally 2 machinery and seeing what it was capable of on the tricky Irish lanes. Johnny Greer and Niall Burns would be finding things difficult, getting caught out a few times. Those stages were mostly dry, but patches of running water in places were causing some issues. They end the day in fifth. The opening day though wasn't going quite to plan for David Kelly and Dean O'Sullivan. A spin on this hairpin would be made worse when they stalled the car losing a handful of time before they could get it restarted and on their way again to an 8th place finish on day 1. West Cork would also see a competitive modified entry with newcomers to the event Jonathan Pringle and Pierce O'Callaghan leading the way on day one. They actually didn't feel like it was going too well, their intention just to take it steady, but they'd come out of the first four stages of the event with a little over 10 seconds of an advantage. Their lead had been over the ever entertaining Frank and Lauren Kelly, lying in second place after the daylight stages, but unfortunately on stage three, the pair would retire and they damaged the suspension on the escort. That left second place to Connor Murphy and Sean Collins. They hadn't been trouble free themselves with a misfire all day and this big overshoot on one of the hairpins. Unfortunately, despite finishing the day in second place, they wouldn't restart on day two. Kevin Eves and Chris Melly took a cautious approach to the stages, too cautious they felt. They were changing the setup on the car throughout the day to try and get it to handle how they wanted. But even with their self-proclaimed slow start, it would be third place for the pair as they go into day two. 
In the RC4 class, it would be Ryan McHugh and Declan Boyle who set the pace, even with the extra drag of the boot coming up through one of the stages. This would be their first time out on night stages, and safe to say, they were enjoying it. Kyle McBride and Dara Mullen were learning a new car this weekend and new tyres, but overall they were happy with the pace and with a second place to end the opening day, they were right to be content. Cian Caldwell and Liam Egan were going well too, although they were just happy to still be going by the end of the day. The conditions in the stages were tricky and it would have been too easy to throw their third place away so early in the event. Someone else who'd be thankful to be at the end of day one would be Owen Lloyd and Sion Williams. A big overshoot on this hairpin would cost them some time, but at least they had a runoff and didn't cause any damage. They ended their day in fifth in class. So before we head into day two, a quick reminder of the results from the opening stages. Divine leads the way in the overall event with Cronin hot on his heels. Matt Edwards a little further back on times than he wanted, but happy enough in third. On to day two, and it's safe to say the weather had taken a turn for the worse. Fog and rain greeted rally leaders Callum Devine and Noel O'Sullivan as they went into Saturday morning, and unfortunately, they wouldn't be in the lead for long. They clipped a rock at the side of the road in stage seven and got a puncture that dropped them down to fifth place as they limped their car to the end of the stage. And that, of course, would leave Keith Cronin and Mikey Galvin to take up the number one spot. They were pushing, but not taking any big risks, and passing the stricken divine on the stage would allow them to back off with a good advantage at the front. Matt Edwards and David Moynihan were showing the importance of notes in these stages, trusting them as the visibility was so poor. They'd made a few changes in the morning service, and the feeling in the car was good. And of course, they were up to second place for now. William Crichton and Liam Regan didn't feel like they were committing as much as they could, feeling that there was a lot more to come from the car and from themselves. They were still going well though and up to third place now with a podium looking good. Josh Moffat and Andy Hayes backed off a little more than they probably should have done in these stages, finding it tough with all the standing water, but they hold on to fourth place at the end of the loop. Just like Devine, who was now just ahead of them on results, Johnny Greer and Niall Burns would hit something when they cut too far into a corner on stage 6. Thankfully for them, it didn't cause any damage, but they'd also have another big scare on stage 8 when they almost lost control in 5th gear. The fog and water would be quite bad in the stages, but David Kelly and Dino Sullivan were managing it well. They'd be lying in 7th place at the end of the loop and happy enough with the run they were having so far. Eddie Doherty and Tom Murphy were finding this weekend to be a steep learning curve in the rally too. The fog on the highest parts of the stage is giving very little visibility. The pair were struggling to commit to the high speed parts of the stages. The morning wasn't going at all well for Gary Kiernan and John McCabe. They had a spin on stage 6 and then broke the top mount of the suspension on stage 8, having to make a roadside repair enough to get them back to service to get it fixed before the next loop. And rounding out the top 10 were Jason McSweeney and Liam Brennan. They were having some electrical issues with the car that resulted in them losing around 40 seconds when the car wouldn't get off the start line of stage 6. Disappointing, but at least they were still going. Taking a look again at the modified battle, and it would still be Jonathan Pringle and Pierce O'Callaghan out in front, struggling a bit with the car floating around on water, but they were keeping it between the hedges and leading by just 4.9 seconds now. Closing in on that lead would be a hard charging Kevin Eves and Chris Melly. They were putting in some fantastic times, not without its moments though. They clipped a bank on one of the stages, but didn't lose them any time, just a rear bumper. So all change in the modifieds and third place would now belong to Colin Byrne and Stephen Quinn. A tough day carrying a 50 second penalty from day one but that wasn't affecting their position. Damien Toner and Kevin Horgan were finding it hard to push in these conditions and it was just too easy to make a mistake. They opted for a fast but sensible drive to make it through the morning stages. 
and they did have a slight advantage in that place to allow them to back off just a bit with Owen and Connor Callan closest to them on the times they entered the morning 40 seconds back. Back in the RC4 battle, it would be the lead still for Ryan McHugh and Declan Boyle. They were struggling to find a rhythm in the car with picking braking points for corners, but things were still going well as they extend their advantage. A spin on the final stage of the morning wasn't helping the times for Kean Caldwell and Liam Egan, although it wasn't the difference between second place and first. They'd just have to play it safe and see what was going to happen up ahead. Johan Lloyd and Cyan Williams were finding the conditions okay, moving their way up the times now as well and into third place. A good end to the morning for the Welsh pair. Connor Shanahan and Kieran O'Donoghue were suffering with a bit of a misfire now, thankfully though not holding them back too much. They get through to the end of the morning loop in fourth and fifth place would be Michael Fitzgibbon and Carrie Ryan. A bit too far back to mount a chase for that fourth place, but of course anything can happen. So with Saturday morning complete, it's all change at the top. Advantage Cronin now with Edwards holding on to second should anything happen, the rally leaders up ahead. On to the afternoon stages now and all that would be on the minds of Keith Cronin and Mikey Galvin would be to keep the car in one piece and maintain that lead. Easier said than done of course, it's not always easy to manage your pace and not give a place away. Matt Edwards and David Moynihan knew that with so many stages to go it was far from over. They might not be able to catch Cronin on stage times alone, but any number of things could push them into the lead and they needed to be there just in case. William Crichton and Liam Regan would reach the end of stage 9 with a smile on their faces, their first fastest overall time and it wouldn't be their last for sure. They lie in third place and still felt there was a bit more to come. Josh Moffat and Andy Hayes would be looking to take that third place from Crichton though, doing their own thing but with an eye on the overall times. 39 seconds would be the difference though and that's a lot of time to make up on the final day. Sadly, the bad luck would continue into the afternoon for Callum Devine and Nolo Sullivan. They clip another rock, this time doing more damage and causing the pair to pull over and retire in the final stage of the day. That would, of course, play into the hands of Johnny Greer and Niall Burns. Fifth place was now theirs and they were getting further up the leaderboard and staying out of trouble themselves. It wasn't a straightforward run for David Kelly and Dino Sullivan today, but it had gone okay overall. They managed to end their day two with a sixth place. Eddie Doherty and Tom Murphy were one of the many crews who were thankful just to get through the day okay. Those conditions far from ideal and with day three looking much better weather-wise, they'd be hopeful for a push in the morning. Gary Kiernan and John McCabe were still struggling with confidence in the stages. They did make some setup changes to the car at service though and it did feel better. Hopefully the confidence is there for a good run on the final day. Jason McSweeney and Liam Brennan were still going well. No different to anyone around them. They were pushing where they could and playing it safe where visibility and water were an issue. They end the day in ninth, thanking the hardworking marshals for standing out in those conditions all day. A comment that of course we echo here too. And rounding out the top 10 now would be David Guest and Jonathan McGrath, happy with their times and getting faster as the event goes on. Once again, all change in the modifieds with new leaders Kevin Eves and Chris Melly having a push in stages that they had some knowledge of to gain a lead of around 40 seconds going into the final day. Jonathan Pringle and Pierce O'Callaghan were still struggling to get the power down with the lack of grip and they did everything they could to hold on to the lead. Alas, it would have to be second place for them at the end of the day and holding on to third place would be Colin Byrne and Stephen Quinn not driving flat out because of the conditions so looking forward to having a go on day three if the stages dry out. In RC4, Ryan McHugh and Declan Boyle were playing it safe like many others. They did get a slow puncture but thankfully saw it before they started the stage and could change it. They dropped back a bit on the road order but without affecting their leaderboard position. 
Johan Lloyd and Sion Williams were on a mission now, moving up to second place. They were still a way off the lead though, so it will be a case of trying to hold on to the place through the final day. And with the others in the class around them having some small issues, it will be a clean and tidy run for Cian Caldwell and Liam Egan to end the second day with third place in RC4. Day two would be the first time we'd see the historic rally competitors and Welsh pair Thomas and Jurek Davies would be the ones who take the early advantage just 16 seconds in hand at the end of the opening day. Neil Williams and Anthony O'Sullivan would be lying in second place for now. The pair were close to the leaders as well, just 16.9 seconds of a difference at this stage. And the fantastic looking Subaru legacy of Ray Breen and Damien Morrissey would end the day in third. They were a bit further back on times, but still just 41 seconds off the lead after the opening day. So before we head into the final day of competition, let's just remind ourselves of those results at the top. Keith Cronin with that strong advantage over Edwards. Survival on day three would be the plan. On to the final day and mercifully there would be a great improvement in those conditions. Certainly making it easier for Keith Cronin and Mikey Galvin to make sure they get to the finish in one piece. Their advantage dropping by a few seconds but plenty in hand. Handbrake issues would be a minor inconvenience for Matt Edwards and David Moynihan in this morning's stages. Not a problem for most of them but there were times it would have been handy. They'd need to sort that out in service before the final loop. William Crichton and Liam Regan were struggling with tyres going off in these stages. They took too soft a compound and they wouldn't last the full loop before giving the pair a few moments towards the end. They keep hold of that third place for now though. Josh Moffat and Andy Hayes were unable to get themselves up to the podium places, at least at this stage anyway. They end the morning in fourth overall but would be enjoying those improving conditions. Johnny Greer and Niall Burns were another pair reporting a wrong tyre choice, their rubber also going off by the end of the morning loop. Not ideal for the times, but not affecting them enough to make a difference to their overall position of fifth. David Kelly and Dean O'Sullivan were starting to improve on the pace now, but felt they were still lacking some speed in the corners. They'd need to find a bit more if they were going to challenge anyone above them on the results into the final stages. Another soft tyre choice for Eddie Doherty and Tom Murphy meant the same issue that many others were having, those tyres starting to lose grip towards the end of the loop, but they make it through in 7th overall. It wasn't tyres that were the issue by the end of the loop for Gary Kiernan and John McCabe, it was brakes, they were starting to lose them in the final miles, they were glad to get to the end and get back to service. Jason McSweeney and Liam Brennan were still smiling and still enjoying the stages this weekend. In particular, the fast sections where they could really open that Fabia R5 up. And we see a new name in the top of the results on this loop as Owen Murphy and Anthony Nestor jump into the top 10. Owen suffering with a bad back all weekend and in a lot of pain at times, so that made the 10th place a bit sweeter. The Modifieds would mirror the overall results with Kevin Eves and Chris Melly clear at the front of the category and just making sure they got through the rally, exercising a bit of mechanical sympathy to make sure they get to the finish in one piece. Sadly though, their second place rivals Jonathan Pringle and Pierce O'Callaghan wouldn't make the end of this stage, rolling the car and unable to continue. So with the loss of Pringle with that roll, it would be second place now for Colin Byrne and Stephen Quinn. It felt good and they felt they were going well. They weren't likely to catch the leaders, but they were still going to try. No real issues for Damien Toner and Kevin Horgan though, apart from a small bump on a telegraph pole, they wouldn't lose any time and would get to the end of the day with third in the modifieds. Back to RC4, all Ryan McHugh and Declan Boyle had to do was get it to the finish. Easier said than done of course. They get through the morning loop but with rear tyres that were completely gone off by the end. Things were still going well now for Johan Lloyd and Sion Williams. They were a bit too far off the leaders, so for now it was about securing that second place for the pair. Keen Codwell and Liam Egan were also playing it safe, but maybe a little too safe. 
They dropped a bit more time than planned, but still looking good for a third place overall finish. So, just three stages to go and the times are looking like this is Cronin's to lose. Let's head out for another run through the stages for the final loop of the event. A look first at the historic cruise though, and it would be the final step on the podium for Wayne Evans and John Smithick. Tire choice in the morning wasn't right, but that would be the case for many others as well. There'd be an issue with the car for Neil Williams and Anthony O'Sullivan, the bonnet coming loose on the Escort and the pair having to resort to strapping it down. It worked though, as the pair take second place. But taking the win after a great performance all day would be Thomas and Yurik Davies. They would lose a little time in the morning, but nothing that would cause them to give up their historic category win. 50 flat crest, 100. Day 3 would also see the juniors taking part and for Jack Callahan and David Ray it would be 5th place, they were enjoying the fast flowing stages. It would be a new car for Kean Hines and Cahill Fallon, though it hadn't all gone to plan. The car threw a fan belt in stage 15, that needed fixing in service though they do make it through to the end of the event and in 4th. Graham and Trevor Roach had sorted a few issues with their car over the winter and it was all feeling good now, though they did run into that similar issue with tyres going off by the end of the loop. They got to the end of the event with third on the podium. It would be a lucky escape for Evan McAvoy and Kieran O'Sullivan as they had this big moment in one of the stages and almost rolled the car. Thankfully, it didn't go over and the pair reached the end of the event in second. But taking the win here at West Cork, it's Kyle Brown and Mark O'Leary. 22 seconds of an advantage at the end of the event. Before we get the overall results, let's take a look at how some of the classes were decided. It'd be a welcome win in RC3 for Brendan Comiskey and Arthur Kearns in the Fiesta Rally 3. Kenneth Fuller and Christine O'Leary would be one of only two finishers in Class 9, with the other being there under Super Rally, but still a deserved win for just getting through such a tricky event. Class 10 would see a dominant performance for Pat McDonough and Lee Kavanagh as they take the class win by almost 8 minutes. 11F was just a little bit closer with James Bradley and David Byrne coming out on top there with just over 2.5 minutes of a lead by the finish. Class 11R would go to Michael Ford and James Flanagan, the Sunbeam pair with a healthy margin by the finish. Class 12 would see Sean Moynihan and Padraig O'Donovan take the points, a good end to the event and with a good lead in the class throughout. Class 13 would see the Corolla of Kean Walsh and Dylan Doonan take the top spot, a victory over Damian Campbell. Alan O'Reardon and James Jordan would be the only finisher in Class 15 to do all the stages. The Impressa crew keeping things going through the whole event. Class 20 sees some of the four-wheel drive cars battling it out, but for Tomas O'Rourke and Michael White, it would be the win over Brian O'Keefe. Sam Leach and Liam Callahan in Class 22 would probably be one of the closest finishes in the classes on this round, just over three minutes ahead by the finish. And finally, in Class 24, it would be Connor McCarthy and Gavin Sheehan who took the early advantage and kept it right to the finish line. The RC4 class had been a good battle throughout the event, but it wasn't going to change over the final loop. Keen Caldwell and Liam Egan take third by the end. For Yoan Lloyd and Cyan Williams, it would be second, a good finish even with a few moments along the way. But taking the win here at round two would be long-time leaders Ryan McHugh and Declan Boyle. The finish also means they're looking good in the championship as well. The finish also means they're looking good in the championship with the lead in class there. Ryan McHugh, two events, two wins, great start to the year. I delighted, I delighted to get over the line here today and get uh, another probably prize one. So and. Uh, Fiesta again, so on top. So ah, it's nice to keep it going. Thank all the sponsors and Neil as well for the 
helped throughout the, the whole time. And yeah, nice to get back onto the tower after two gravel rallies there and get a win on the gravel too. So uh, hopefully get uh, get well up the list for this nomination early for the Billy Coleman this year. So I'm uh, looking forward to that now. It's on to the modifieds and sadly for Colin Byrne and Stephen Quinn it would be stage 17 that put an end to their event crashing out and not making the finish. Some change then in the podium places as we see JF Shovlin and Terence Fury reaching the final step on the podium in third in their escort. Damien Toner and Kevin Horgan just wanted to get through the event so they took it a bit easier on the final stages though second place certainly a welcome result for the pair. But taking the win Kevin Eves and Chris Melly. They were worried that spectators would think they had an issue with the speed they were driving the stages in order to get to the finish in one piece. They did what they needed to do and took the win putting them second place in the standings. Kevin, finally a bit of luck. A great victory here in West Cork. Three tough days of rallying here. Yeah, no, I'm definitely happy to get to the end, uh, especially even a three-day, because that's what we were even thinking last year. I don't think we had good old times in most of the internationals, but we didn't make it to the end of one of them. So I think to get the monkey off the back and just get to the end of this was a good one. So it was nearly a tricky day of the day, how we were we were just trying to really manage ourselves. So we, we thought we'd be on a bit of a push with Pringle, and then when he was off, we were we were just literally trying to find the finish line. So I ah, know, happy. Hey, it was just, everything was through us, dry, wet. Mucky, fall green, so that was class, yeah. great weekend. On to the overall results now, and sadly we'd lose Jason McSweeney and Liam Brennan. The pair went off the road in stage 17. Johnny Greer and Niall Burns would be glad to keep themselves inside the top 10, ending the event in fifth place and finally getting to enjoy the stages now that they were dry. Josh Moffat and Andy Hayes would be glad to finish the event with a clean day. No issues from the pair and the stages were good. They take fourth place overall and while it might not give them number one on the door next year, it was certainly a result they'd be happy with. It also puts them second in the championship. It had been a successful weekend for William Crichton and Liam Regan, new to the car and still getting used to it, but this weekend they had all kinds of conditions thrown at them, so the perfect way to shake down the new mount. With their sights set on second from earlier in the event, Matt Edwards and David Moynihan would be happy enough doing what they needed to do in order to keep that place, and it's a welcome result after their opening round disaster. And of course, that means Keith Cronin and Mikey Galvin managed to hold on to the lead to the finish to take another win. Two from two now and putting themselves clear in the lead of the championship. So, before we get some reaction, a quick look at how those final results were decided. Keith, a dream start to your Tarmac Championship campaign. Two wins and two events. Yeah, I couldn't have asked for a better start. Uh, we came to this year with not a lot of rallying done over the last few years, but uh, got the win in Galway and now got the win here in the West Cork. Um, it's great to get it. Really tough rally. But in terms of the championship, championships are, are long years, so we're very early days yet. We'll go to other rounds. Other guys are going to be quick. We could have problems. Uh, it can't just, It's so far off off the end of the year. So, um, but it was great to get the start. Rather be on this side of it than than anywhere else. Matt, good solid points on the board after round two here in West Cork. Yeah, definitely, uh, definitely. The was was the idea going into this uh, this weekend. Get some points on the board after obviously disappointing Galway starts the year. So um, great for every, great for the team. Great for CNM and No Locker and Pirelli. You know, it's um, it's been a, a big team effort particularly building the mental side up after you know what happened in Galway and um, you know feel a lot more myself a lot more of a free spirit driving today and even yesterday was enjoyable given the conditions just just learning bit by bit all over again really. William a dream start to your WRC2 campaign and obviously uh, your campaign in a Rally 2 Fiesta with M Sport. Yeah it's been a great weekend um, it's been so much fun but also really productive you know we've had every condition thrown at us this weekend um, Friday in the dark, difficult start, you know, first time really driving the car and then into Saturday was a washout. So, but, you know, even with difficult conditions, just from the start of the rally, we felt comfortable and we've changed really very little on the car, to be honest. Um, so, yeah, it, it's great to see a Ford 1, 2, 3 there as well. And for us, you know, getting miles and a serious competition here in, in the Irish Tarmac Championship to, you know, uh, get our get our game up to speed now for the British Championship and the WRC. 
It wasn't just a successful day on the stage as the hard work of the organisers paid off. Steve Davis, clerk of the course, was certainly happy with how things went. Steve, clerk of the course of the 2024 West Cork Rally, it's just been an unbelievable success. Yeah, as I say, Killian, it just started off on a night stage on Friday, so it was a big, big uh, task to get that up and running on Friday. I think everyone was happy with it. It was a really good turnout, in fairness, the spectators loved it, competitors loved it. So, uh, yes, I was a bit disappointed with the weather. We couldn't do anything about that, but it ran away fine. We had, thankfully, no blockages, nobody carted off the hospital, so it was a really good event for us. And the weather came out today, all the better for everyone in Clan of Kilty. You have a well-oiled machine down here. Just every cog in the wheel seems to work, and all the people around you seem to work so hard. There's a huge team, absolutely huge team. My own team behind me, along with the Clan of Kilty uh, Rallies Committee down here. It's a huge event down here, so and they get on support with us, along with the local businesses and communities. So a lot of marshals out there helping us and competitors, or sorry, um, stage commanders. A lot of help out there, t thankfully. Next up, the Championship has a very short break, returning with the Circuit of Ireland. Keep an eye on the Facebook page for live coverage throughout the weekend, and we'll be back with highlights from Round 3 soon after. Thanks for watching. Thank you so much.